hello to all of you, the viewers of Berlin Daily Culture. We are today talking more about Book of Will Richardson, Rome, with those two cows on it, if you were looking at on Amazon, for example. But here he is here with me in the studio. Will? <laughs> I am. Thanks for having me, Maria. It's good to see you. Uh, it's funny. Uh, but wait, why two cows? Two cows? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is she going to ask me why there are two cows on the, on the front? I don't know. You don't, don't know. know. It no, was because it says, if you look, it says, there are clues on the front of the book. It says, a cow, uh, a, a confessions, confessions of a, of a cowboy, cowboy capitalist. Cabin. So obviously a cowboy so it has something to do with cows. So there's a guy, one of his jobs in the, Bobby J. Mann, the hero of the book, one of his jobs is he's a cattleman. Yeah, okay. Okay. And a lot of Americans were. Yeah, yeah. Well, part of, but he's taking, he's doing, exporting cows from the United States to other countries. That's one of the things that happens I, in this. Okay. So, but he makes his first big money out of being a cowboy. Okay, but so selling that's... cows around the world. So that's <laughs> so, why he's a cowboy capitalist. Oh, I see. So it's yeah. like an expanded version of a cowboy. Yeah, yeah. In a, <laughs> it's in a like way. <laughs> an expand, it's like import, exporting John Wayne, you know? He's not really a John Wayne character, but uh, everybody thinks of him as the, or Clint Eastwood as quintessential cowboys, I guess. But. So let's talk more about, it, about his wanderlust, okay. so about this. Basically, he's a, small, he's a boy from a small town. That's right. And you mentioned the beginning that everyone thinks he's stupid, but he's not. Uh, he well, just, you just, they think he's hard to handle and, and rather, yeah, but no, he's not, yeah. It's the other thing about a man. He has an eidetic memory, which means, I don't know if I pronounced that right, it's a big word, but uh, I wanted to try to explain his intelligence and his ability for, for, for facts, because a lot of things, or actually, he remembers, uh, as he's telling you the story, right? It would be hard to remember if you didn't have an amazing memory. It, most people wouldn't remember these things. I know it's a trick of the, of the author that you say, oh, yeah, and then, okay, but they just, he just does. But in this case, he, uh, I decided that, uh, to uh, put in there that he had this very special memory for details. Yeah, because there are a lot um, of details in this book. There are a lot of details. For, because of dates, yeah. facts, That's and right. yeah. uh, what's happened, and, yeah. some, and most of it are real, real, I mean, most I of it I based on a real person who actually remembered these things. Now, some of it I've added, being, being the writer, um, and as I say, it's a nonfiction novel, which means basically everything in this book did take place. Oh, yeah. It's the, the parts that, the most fantastic things are, are real, it's true. Sometimes yeah, happens. Yeah, and that's true in this book. And the things that aren't so are maybe some things that I use to as devices to move the story along. Yeah, but all the places are real, and all of the major events in this are actually true based on this person's life. And he did. He was an intelligence officer in Vietnam who almost died, and had a miraculous escape, and then. Uh, and then went on to become a multimillionaire. If you call $75 million a lot of money, I do. Okay, so take us a little yeah. bit more through the history, uh, the story of, okay. it, of the book. So he, he goes from the small town of Utopia. He, uh, he ends up just uh, signing up for the, for the war because he loses his basketball scholarship. And uh, uh, he, 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 he signs up and they, they decide that when he takes his test in the army, they decide that he's very bright. So he's, it's like Forrest Gump. He goes off and then there's a lot of adventures. But he's smart, even though he has some Gump-like characteristics and uh, he does some some. And Forrest Gump things. is also a story about what happened in, this, in the 20th century. Yeah, right? from Vietnam and forward. I mean, I didn't really realize it was like this. This story was like that till later when I thought about it. Um, but also because yeah. we have to say that Vietnam was an important part of American history in the 20th century. It's huge. Yeah. And it shaped, yeah. affected many families. It, it, it affected the whole progress of the country after, from the 60s onward. Um, it is, it's really a, a sub-motif of everything that happened up until, the, we can say, the 90s with the fall of, of, the, of, of the Russian Empire. Yeah. Yeah, and the other thing is that, uh, so th there is this necessity that a person needs to go out to the world to test it himself or herself. Well, it's an initiation story in this way, too, which is a classic literary theme. Anybody who's studied any writing knows that. Uh, and I used to try to struggle with these, these kind of things. What is that? You know, and I remember studying these things in, in, in my composition classes. But, but it is actually a classic initiation story. But what isn't? A young man going out in the world is always going to be, or a woman, 
a young person going out in the world is always going to be an initiation. So um, if you start off at that point in time, then that's going to be an element. Okay. But then he has constant initiations because he's constantly turning up in different situations. So in that way, it, I suppose it resembles a bit like Benjamin Button. He's not living backwards, he's living forwards, but he's ending up in the most fantastic situations through in his life. And, and as he goes through these things, we go with him because it's told in the first person. It's told in the first person in order to make you see it through his eyes, not to be an uh, omniscient observer uh, with, the, with the writer in, say, third person. By putting it in first person, you're, you're, uh, which is a device, of course, and you're keeping the reader right with him, you know, in of his course, pocket, so to speak. Because I would say... Because I could have written it third person, no problem, but... But then it's yeah. a, more like a history book because you go through it and the events are the same, but we have to go through emotions of this person. That's it. I, the, I think the emotions are crucial. That's a really good point. Because if it's a history book, you don't necessarily get the emotion. Uh, you can get emotion in third person stories, of course. But for this, because there's so much action in this and so much movement and so much growth of the personality, I thought you needed to go on the ride with him and you need to take that roller coaster. Yeah. Well, fair enough. So what is left for us is just to invite the viewers of Berlin Daily to go this road with Bobby J, the second part of 20th century, through Vietnam War and many other places until to Poland, because there is the Polish part in it. Go take it. It's really well written. It's witty. It's funny. And it's also a good reminder of what happened to the Western civilization just a few years ago. I would say it, it's worth, definitely, definitely worth the read. And stay with us for another episode.